fight we thought we might not ever see. But now it's time to call it a day. Just hours after his loss to Malinga, Ben knew he had to fight on. I knew deep down it wasn't me and everybody knows it wasn't me. The man to bring him back was the Celtic warrior Steve Collins. And when they met on Tuesday, the war of words began. I thought it was going to knock him out, yeah. I thought it was going to stop him. Obviously, he may disagree, but um, I honestly believe and I'm sure it's going to happen. And uh, I can argue with him, but it's not about an argument. I'll just get out and do it. You see, he's trying to fight me out like he did you, Banks. Can't do that with me. Can't do that with me. Then I went up to him. You're struggling with middleweights. Struggling. Cornelius Carr and Neville Brown. Um, a powerful super middleweight. A mm. powerful... And nobody ain't worked his body like I will. Collins trained in Jersey as usual and in public here earlier this week. For Ben it was Tenerife, but behind closed doors and with a new attitude. I'm not going in all stiff and rigid. I'm going, I'm going in like, have a good time. There's a new fire in me that I haven't had for a while. And uh, you'll see a lot more than you've seen in the past because obviously I want this fight big time. And because of Nigel Ben's style, my style will adapt to the style that I had in the beginning. And... Uh, I think you'll get a very entertaining fight. I know when I go to the, to the well, it won't be dry. I can tell you that now. Now that I'm the champion, I will not do what he, he has done. I will give him the chance he never gave me. And uh, when I beat him, I won't feel any remorse for all. No, I feel like um, he had it coming. It was due. You know, I owe him this beating. Gary Norman gathering the thoughts of two highly experienced, seasoned professionals preparing for a major event in the ring behind me here at the 9X Arena. How would it go tactically? That's the task we set for Barry McGuigan, and Barry has been trying to foresee how the fight could be made here. In the early days, Collins was known for his boxing and counter-punching. He used his quick reflexes to slip opponents' punches and come back with his own. He controlled things from the center of the ring. This was the style he used to beat Eubank first time round. But in their second meeting, he rushed out from the starting blocks and mauled his way to a convincing points win. Since then, he has dismantled Cornelius Carr and Ever Brown with similar brawling tactics. This is exactly the type of fight that Nigel Benn likes. He relishes a war and his opponents who have been drawn in can't match his raw power and ferocity. But there is a vulnerability to Ben. He has been caught and hurt himself but this is when he's at his most dangerous. We have seen Collins go down, and this is the way Ben can win inside the distance. But last time out, he was out-jabbed, out-boxed, and outclassed by Sugar Boy Malinga. And if Collins can revert back to his old style of boxing, he can bust up and beat Ben and retain his title on points. All right, Barry, they, those are the things that may have gone through Steve Collins' mind. How do you think he is prepared to do the job here tonight? Well, he mentioned in the interview that he would revert back to his old style. That old style was counter-punching, standing in the centre of the ring, picking his punches, moving off to the right, moving off to the left, slipping Ben's punches and trying to come back, but carefully picking his punches, working off the jab. If he does the other thing, which is uh, which Ben wants him to do, draw him into a, a mall, it could be a very short fight. Jim, is Ben as dangerous now as he was two years, four years ago? Yeah, definitely. Ben is a wonderful gymnasium worker. He's always in the best of shape, and the power is the last thing a fighter loses. He's just as dangerous, and maybe even more so, because he'll probably take more chances tonight than he would normally do. But I think that, in the end, will be his downfall. Why? Well, if Steve Collins changed his style to suit Eubank, he knew he had to to take the play away from Eubank and set the pace. Against Nigel Ben, he'll be much more careful. He'll use his old defensive tactics, but still break up with attacks as well. So he knows exactly what he has to do to beat Nigel Ben. Nigel, I think, will have a final fling. Nigel will play to the crowd. A tremendous atmosphere here today. This is a wonderful atmosphere. Nigel Ben will be more affected by that atmosphere than Steve Collins. I think he'll play to that atmosphere and make maybe too many mistakes. Neither man has ever dodged anybody as they've built spectacularly successful careers and for Collins in particular this is one fight he has wanted for a long time I've been chasing you for a long time I've been looking for you and now I finally have you where I want you in my ring fighting for my title which I'm going to keep I'm sure this man has other ideas ah. lackluster last time out 
doesn't look very lacklustre tonight, does he, with his trainer, Kevin Sanders, as Nigel Benn prepares for a 15th world title fight. The action's next. We're live tonight at the brand new 21,000-seater 9X Arena in Manchester for the most hotly awaited domestic fight of the year on home territory. The Eagles, Van Morrison and Ray Charles and Tom Jones have been top of the bill acts over the summer, but I venture to suggest that none have quite captured the imagination of the public like Steve Collins and Nigel Benn. So is it one curtain call too many for Ben? We're about to find out. Our master of ceremonies tonight, Mike Goodall. He announced his retirement in the ring. Nigel Benn is back. The question tonight is, is Ben on the slide? Has the fire gone out? Or was the defeat against Sugar Boy Malinga and the world title defeat just a blip? He seems relaxed and focused. He seems to have trained perfectly in Tenerife. But only when the action starts will we really get the answers. Thirty-two years old now in his 15th world title fight. And this evening getting a purse of £800,000, which reportedly is going into a pension fund. And Frank Bruno there acting as cheerleader for Ben, just as Ben did for Bruno on the night that Frank became WBC heavyweight champion last year against Oliver McCall. They remain good friends. Soulmates, even. Will we see the old Ben tonight? One thing's for certain, just judging by the size of the crowd here, jam-packed full at the 9X Arena. He remains a massive success at the box office. He certainly looks a little more relaxed with this fight, isn't he? Enjoying the atmosphere there. Sanders, the trainer, Peter De Freitas, the manager there.
music of Mission Impossible being used to introduce Steve Collins tonight. I'm not sure it's a Mission Impossible. He's starting as a favourite with the bookmakers. The man who sent Chris Eubank into retirement, will he now do the same permanently to Nigel Benn? Collins predicts he wins this fight, possibly inside seven rounds. the master of the mind games. The Celtic warrior who's come up quite a long way from the days when he was an electrician in a Dublin brewery. were exchanged last night but that's all par for the course in the build up to these big fights these days underrated fighter in many ways Glenn very underrated he's really he's come along the hard way he's been in with tough fights he's come he's had his successes and this is a fight he really really wants he sees this as you know he can get a, a lot of credibility in putting Ben into retirement Fourth defence for Steve Collins tonight. He's the younger man by a year, the taller man at 5 feet 11, Collins. Collins originally over the limit and then wildly inside at the weigh-in mysteriously yesterday. Total fights, Ben has had 46, Collins 35. They both lost three, Ben with the higher knockout percentage. The big puncher. The three knockdown rule will be in effect here. Mandatory count, no standing eight. Only the ref can stop the fight, and the bell will save the fighter only in the last round. The odds for this fight, Steve Collins, 13 to 8 on to win. Then odds against at 6 to 5, you can get 25 to 1 to draw. We await MC, Mike Goodall.
contest and comes to the ring the former WBO middleweight and former WBC super middleweight champion of the world and tonight is the challenger for the title the dark Can Nigel Benn prove everybody wrong again? Those who've said he's a washed up fighter. Will he produce a performance like a wounded animal? A defeat by Malinga has hurt his pride. It could make him dangerous. But is there any fire still left? Collins in his usual tartan trunks. Well, really, what sort of fight is Collins? going to fight is he going to go all out aggressive or is he going to try and use his head a little bit and try and box when he needs to and fight when he has to the key moment will be what happens when ben lands for the first time part of ben's strategy is i know to go for body punches or will Collins stick to that same old brawling marauding style that has served him so well so far in the two wins over eubank who could have been weight trained and remember the last two challenges Cornelius Carr and Neville Brown were really just blown up middleweights good punches from Collins early on here Ben is very much the full blown super middleweight with some real power remember too that Eubank in one of the fights did have Collins on the floor and didn't really follow up left hook gets through from Ben and it looks like we're going to have the out-and-out out slugging match and brawl, possibly. Just with the type of personality we are, this is the fight we, we thought it would be. We didn't think it'd be a boxing match. We thought it'd be a brawl. Ben nods to his corner, smiles. deep is Ben's desire to reprove himself all over again nice and elusive there from Ben the Collins isn't rushing in wildly but he is trying to load up very heavily with his punches when he is in close Slipping the punches quite well now that he's got into a rhythm in the second half of this first round. Ben's corner telling him to jab and be first. One of those doing the shouting in that corner, Frank Bruno. Just rather lunged in there. Missed wildly, Ben. It's just a little bit keyed up. He's got to start and use his jab a good weapon and then build up with the bigger punches Collins really is a battle hardened warrior only three very good fighters have beaten him the crowd very much pro Ben chance of Nigel Nigel ringing around the arena but Collins I think won the first Good body shots by Steve Collins in that first round, Glenn. 
Yes, I think he did uh, enough to win. He was landing the, the solid punches. See, good head punches there. As Ben's coming and not really getting on target with any of his own. So a good round for Collins to start. Just a slight modification of the Collins style we've seen in recent fights. Just looking for counter punches and then body punches to follow. Just lost his balance for a moment there. He really does have a rock solid chin as well, Collins, normally. Can Ben move him? Can he make a dent? in that normal resilience. Rollins in his eighth world title fight and Ben in his 15th. Good right hand from Collins. He's just got the timing a little better than the early part. Really found his rhythm yet, Ben. Can he find one of those honey punches to send Collins reeling backwards and really send some shock waves? They're both very keyed up for this fight. They know it means so much. And they're just becoming entirely inside as they try to get position. They're almost testing each other's strength inside, you feel. An untidy second round so far. Collins, who has vast respect for Ben, said he needs to feel a bit of fear of his opponents to produce the best, and Ben inspires that fear in him. He's worked very hard in Jersey for this fight, but so too has Nigel Ben in Tenerife, though this time he's locked the holiday makers out. Two of them exchanging, and Collins leaving himself very open there, and could have been made to pay for it with the right hand. Ben just got through with a good uppercut to start that exchange. And that's why he managed to turn him and put him on the ropes. Uh, he just missed the punch there, Ben slipped over. Impetus took him through. Ben, though, has had his successes in this second round. the right hand, good shot from Ben. Nate Collins miss. And both of them too going to the body. Welcome back Nigel. Ben has Frank Bruno, his soul mate there in the corner. And his advice is get that jab going Nigel. I've seen a lot of that so far. Uh, Collins just a, a little bit open there. A very even round, pretty untidy. Ben's got to use his well, but I think both fighters have got to use their jab a little more. They've got to work for their openings. They're both just loading up, looking for the big shot, just becoming a little untidy. Third round, left hook from Ben, finds the target. Ben's only lost three in his 46 fight career against Michael Watson, Chris Hubank, and Sugar Boy Malinga. Proud record, he's never been beaten by an American. Good left hook again, and that time it sent Collins reeling backwards. He felt the weight of that one all right. Yes, well, that was definitely the best punch of the fight. Beautiful left hook timed by Ben there. And he just counted with that right hand as well. And every time Ben has his successes, he just shoots a little glance at the corner. And he's beginning to find the target here with ominous regularity as far as Collins is concerned. And three more get through on a left hook. And Collins is certainly being forced backwards. And this is, was a key point in this fight. This granite-chinned Irishman is up here with one of the big punches of the division, of any division. And he's feeling the weight of them. He is, he's just leaving himself a bit over. He's just thinking about it a little too much before he throws the punch. And Ben's timing good punches into him. Collins working away to the head in close. 
crowd didn't like that. They felt something illegal was going on. And then some good body shots on the right hand as well. Two of them fell in. Collins is now in the ascendancy. And a left, Ben looking disorganized for half a minute or so. And he'd started the round so well. Flurry here from Collins, putting the pressure on Ben, but this is where Ben is always at his most dangerous with his back against the ropes. Yes, you've so often seen him produce a really big punch in those circumstances. But just when you think Collins is on the run of it, isn't it typical of him to come on strong again like that? Crowd trying to urge Ben on with chance of Nigel, Nigel. Cut from Ben looked a good shot. Oh, and a left hook again from Ben. And Collins took that so well. A lot of fighters, I think, would have been on the floor from that shot. Well, this round has ebbed and flowed. Both of them have landed with some very solid shots. And the work is all starting to get a lot cleaner and they're starting to get their punches on now. Best round so far by a streak. Collins, even with his punch resistance, can he continue to take punches like that from Ben over a 12-round distance? Ben's round, I would suspect. Better work there. Collins had a good little spell in the middle of it, but Ben started so well with them crisp punches and really caught Collins flush. And right at the end of the round again, it was Ben's on, ben on the attack. This is this uh, spell Ben had right at the start of the round. And he really got the leverage, he really wound up to that left hook. And Collins did tremendously well to take a punch like that. Collins came back, he's a real warrior. And he had a good spell in the middle of the round where he's trying to put the pressure on Ben, but Ben was just moving his head very well there to keep out of the way. Again, the good work, the left hook, he's just getting rolling around, but Collins just a little open in the legs, just a little tremor there for a split second. Well, we saw in Collins' last fight against Neville Brown, he got hit with a lot of shots, but that was against basically a man who was a middleweight. There's a lot of difference taking those punches and taking those of Ben. Collins may need to get a bit more elusive. Fourth round. Warning from the Puerto Rican referee, Mr. Rodriguez, for Ben. It's another hard, hard battle. Ben has been in quite a few of them down the years, and you wonder whether they would take their toll. But he has points to prove and things to win again, and that, I think, may well have given him back his edge. Collins just appears to have a little too much respect for Ben at this point. He's just pausing before he, he throws a punch. And that's just giving Ben the confidence to land his own. Good left hook there from Collins. Found the punch well, but then a good right hand back from Ben. That's where Collins wants Ben, but watch Ben with his back to the ropes. Look at him come out off those ropes with those hooks. And this could well develop into a thriller. Absolutely key fight, of course, for both men. Ben has talked of retirement for quite a while now, and when fighters do that, you kind of wonder whether their desire and ambition is still there. But he seems to have plenty back here tonight so far anyway. Fourth round. Ben very much the fighter with a lot of pride. He'll not go out without a tremendous fight. Down goes Ben. It's only a slip, I think. But he's hurt his ankle, I think. He's hurt his right ankle. Oh, dear. Is he going to be able to carry on? It looked a very painful fall. Oh, dear. Oh, he's really struggling. Can Ben go on? He's OK, he says. Well, I thought for a moment there, he'd sprained the ankle. He says he's all right. Takes more than that. But Collins senses here that Ben may be there for the taking for a moment. 
and spurred on by the, the little signs of distress from the an ankle injury. Well, it would be awful if a freak injury like that was to be decisive. Then he's caught by big punches to the head. Oh, and then he's looking away. And it's over. He can't go on with the ankle. He's caught by headshots. And the fight is stopped in the fourth round. Steve Collins wins the big battle and it was all over very suddenly and you have to say that that ankle injury played a big, big part in it. He kind of turned his back on the action for a moment, Ben, as if he couldn't go on with the pain. But isn't that sad? It is sad. A terrible way to, to, to lose a fight like this. Obviously a very important fight. It obviously was a, a bad injury. He, he went on for a little bit, but then he must have had the the strength in that angle and he turned away and Collins landed a few punches but it was obvious Ben could not continue most unfortunate just as that battle was really brewing up Ben just turned away Collins hit him with a few head punches at that point for good measure but my impression was that Ben basically said he couldn't go on What do you think, Glenn? It's a bit, it's a bit unsatisfactory. Very unsatisfactory. Frank Grun obviously very concerned. But I think Ben will be bitterly disappointed. But with an injury, it, it was obviously very bad. He, he looked in serious distress. He couldn't go on. You've got a man there with intense pride and would have fought any way he could. But it was obviously a, a bad trip. He couldn't go on and Collins has got the victory. Now, let's have a look and see how this injury happened. And just off balance there, you see he's very twisted on that leg. Just trying to get the punch when Collins turned around. He's obviously twisted his ankle quite severely there. Let's see it again. Watch, he just he gets out of the way of that one, twists violently round to make that punch. And obviously the ankle was not up to it. And his right ankle has gone. He said after that he was okay to continue, but the action went on for a few more seconds, and then he seemed to just turn his back on it. Now, oh, that's... Uh, that is unfortunate. I just wonder, Glenn, whether we are now going to have a rematch of this fight. Well, it, it certainly was a, an unsatisfactory end. It was building up to be a very good fight indeed. It was still very close on my card I had it even with, with Ben winning the, the, the last round Collins the first and the middle even so it was all there to fight for an unsatisfactory end to what could have been a tremendous fight so just like uh, Chavez de la Hoya it's over in four rounds with an injury playing a part and that injury is going to need some treatment they'll have him back to the dressing room I'm sure very shortly to have that treated but Steve Collins is still the WBO super middleweight champion. That's the bottom line at the end of it all. Just as a really savage battle appeared to be developing. And I wonder whether Ben will call it a day there. Frank Bruno looking rather rueful. I wonder if we'll see him back in a ring with the shorts on. That's, uh, of course, a debating point for another day, but... Look at that. Collins has got vast amount of respect for Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 40 seconds of the fourth round, the referee has stopped the contest. Nigel Ben is unable to continue. The winner and still WBO Super Middleweight Champion. Just wondering whether Nigel Ben, Glenn, should have asked for a bit more time.
to recover from the injury. I think he could have had up to five minutes. Well, I think in the, in the heat of battle and with the injury the way it was, he probably didn't, didn't think of that. But I think he tried to go on. So you know, I think he wanted to go on, but obviously the injury was too bad. It, you know, Ben's not the type of fighter to turn away. So it was obviously just too much to take. Successful fourth defense for Steve Collins. But I have a feeling, because of the unsatisfactory nature of the, of the, uh, of the fight, that uh, there may be some talk of a rematch. I think uh, they're try trying to get Nigel Benn now to talk to Gary Norman and he'll maybe explain what happened. And there he is, cobbling down. Now then, let's see if we can... Uh, let's go to Gary Norman. Nigel Over to Gary Norman. I think he's got Nigel with him. Nigel. It's a very unsatisfactory way to, to finish a fight. Tell us what happened. Well, as you see me, Steve were throwing punches and I twisted my ankle. And that's that, man. Very disappointed, but you know, not taking nothing away from Steve. But it's something now where I've got to sit down with my fiance and say, I honestly think this is it for me. This is it. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming. I'd like to... Big respect to my No Fear Global and I wish a safe trip to Australia for Alison and every girl that wish all a safe trip. And most of all I'd like to fight, thank everybody that supported me, but I got a no win to say this is it man. My fiance wants me to stop, so my dad wants me to stop. Don't worry dad. I can honestly say I don't care, you know. I doubt it if I'm, I'm going to carry on now. I think, you know, well done, Steve. You know, but, you know, now it's time to thank you all. And I think that's it for me now. Steve, you know, you know, Steve, we had no bad blood between us. Thank you, Nigel Ben. Thanks for giving me the chance to have this fight and make myself a good payday. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. He's been a great champion. The old Nigel is gone. This Nigel is not the one that was around four or five years ago. We missed that chance, but he's still a great warrior, and I want everybody to give him a great round of applause. Well done, Nigel. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Manchester. Thank you, Alex Ferguson. Well, we have some outstanding questions to be answered here in Manchester, the thoughts of Jim Watt and Barry McGuigan to follow as uh, Steve consoles Dixon, Ben and Frank Bruno, members of the losing Ben camp tonight. Come back to us and we also will bring you the action from the Commonwealth and IBF Intercontinental Light Middleweight title, dual title fight tonight between Chris Pyatt and Steve Foster. Steve Collins reigns on here at the 9X Centre in Manchester as WBO World Super Middleweight Champion Nigel Benn's attempt to come out of retirement and win back a world title ends in defeat technically and many unanswered questions after the injury in round four which caused the fight to be called off. Collins declared the winner. Barry McGuigan and Jim Watt watched the fight with us. Barry, your thoughts first. I thought it was a desperately sad and unsatisfactory ending to what what was going to was heated up to be an absolutely brilliant fight. It was a very unfortunate situation. These things do happen. He threw all his weight behind the punch. He actually turned over on his ankle and genuinely hurt himself. We could never question Nigel Benn's uh, strength and courage. And uh, he should have really packed it in when he, got, when he got up off his feet. He should have said, no, I'm not going to continue. But it took a couple of more punches to remind him how bad his injury was. And then he packed it in. Jim, we're more familiar with boxers sustaining injuries to the upper body than the... Yeah, yeah, it's very unusual for this type of thing to happen. It has happened in the past, it has happened a few times, but you sure. can see the way he goes down here, and as soon as he lands on the floor, he's on his ankle there. You can see he's holding his ankle, it happens straight away on the way down, so there's no question 
that uh, there's a serious injury taking place there. I mean, Nigel has proved his courage in the past. No way he would ever look for an excuse or a way out. And he was well in the fight at this point. He had detested Collins' chin once or twice. He was well in the fight. But he couldn't possibly, I mean, Collins is the, the toughest man on the planet when, when everything is going well. No chance he can continue uh, with a bad ankle injury, no chance. Was Collins impressing you? Did you have him in a lead to that point? Yes, I think what we have to remember is a pity. The fight ended in anti-climax, a terrible anti-climax, but we still have to remember we had a winner and a loser. And full credit to Steve Collins. He could have come along and boxed carefully for a few rounds, tried to draw this thing out of Nigel before he started, but he didn't. He came and he stood right off, stood in front of Nigel Ben for the four rounds, fought Nigel at his own game and beat him, and unfortunately the way it happened, but full credit to Collins, he did it the hard way and he gave us a wonderful four rounds. The official line here right now is that Nigel Benn has retired. Yes, I know we've told you this before, but that's what Nigel Benn is telling us this time, and until we're told different, we have to believe that he will not be making a comeback. Frank Warren, who uh, promoted here tonight, incidentally, has said that he leaves the question of a rematch to settle any remaining arguments open for future debate. So you just have to keep watching.